I started in 1960. Right. Uh, you, if you, you know, you ask far off the old questions, right. and I'll... So was that straight from school, sort of thing? No, no, no. Uh, I started from school in a, a main roots group agent in North London. Right. When I actually started work, I was already very interested in motor racing. Mm. Uh, from my uh, later school days, uh, the time it took for me to to get into motor racing mm. uh, was uh, probably delayed, I suppose, by uh, one having to do their national service at that time in the fifties, mm. and then you know assessing. And thinking about how one could actually get into it, because in the it, first place uh, there was no <coughs> racing teams around. No, that's right. Uh, around where I lived, there was the opportunity I could have gone to Connaught's in in Surrey, mm. but uh, uh, one must remember in the fifties people just didn't sort of take off no. to the other side of London and no. work the other side of London and out in the country when one didn't drive a car just take too long to get there and didn't have very much money mm. uh, so I suppose if I'd have been more adventurous I would have gone and found somewhere to sort of stay in yeah. a, a room somewhere and mm. got stuck in which in in, in some ways I regret uh, but uh, you know that's all history I yeah, suppose quite. yeah yeah I would have uh, got into that company via uh, one of my school friends uh, who uh, was an underwriter at Lloyd's. His father was an underwriter at Lloyd's mm. and they knew the McAlpine family. And uh, right. Kenneth McAlpine used to drive a Connaught. Yeah. So mm. I might have been able to... got in that way. Yes. Mm. But, uh, but you didn't. But I didn't. And it it wasn't until until Lotus opened up in North London over at Hornsey yeah. that one could really, you know, think about the possibility of Getting in joining them. Mm. And I did have the opportunity in nineteen fifty seven to go and work there, as I think perhaps a lot of people uh understand in those days they didn't pay very much money it's not like joining a formula one team now no quite uh where the staff and uh, mechanics are far above the uh, average day-to-day mm. wage yeah and presumably if you'd have joined them there it would have been quite pre- precarious the uh, team anyway would, uh, would it well as long as you worked hard and fitted in it was very important that people's personalities right. fitted together mm. all important that was mm. yeah I would have been okay I'm sure mm. because in later later were. life I, I was okay yeah. I yeah. fitted in so when did you finish at Roots? Well, I finished I finished or, in the garage business in August of 1960 right and then went to what? Straight to Lotus? Straight to Lotus. Job there first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was like my second application. And where were they then? Based? Uh, they'd moved to Chesant. Right. And I lived in Edmonton. Mm-hmm. So it was a matter of, you know, five or six miles down the road out in the country to Chesant. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. was all very, very convenient. And what were you doing straight before, when you first started straight off? Well, <coughs> when I started off there, I'd built myself a 750. Austin Special, right. which I took up, or I drove up there in for my interview. And Who interviewed you? Uh, I was interviewed by Len Street because the advert in the paper was for uh, mechanics to build Lotus Elites on the production line. And here. what paper was it in? It wasn't in a racing paper or anything like that, uh, just a general... I've, I think it was probably in our local paper. Hmm. Which makes uh, sense, doesn't it? Yes, I think it was probably in our local paper, and uh, I went. I replied to the uh, to the advert, and I was interviewed. And 
Len Street said, well, you're not really the, the sort of person we're looking for. I think I'd better call Roy Badcock. Right. And he what was, was he the, doing? He was the uh, manager of Lotus Components. Right. Okay. Uh, they were the people who built the, uh, the customer Formula One cars, sports cars, Formula Junior cars. So why do you think you'd be better off there? Uh, because uh, he obviously got the message that my main interest was in the racing side of things. Right. I thought if one joined Lotus, you would be able to move from department That's right. yeah. to department, mm. depending on which direction you wanted to go. And did it work like that? It didn't work like that, which was quite surprising. Yeah. Uh, it seemed you got locked into a department... And if you were a good worker in that department... That's where you stayed. Your manager didn't want you to go. Yeah. And it was obvious after a short period of time, but it was easier for somebody to come from totally outside... To go straight into... To go straight into the racing department, which yeah. was... And you're thinking, well, I'm already here, and I'm going to yeah, go Yeah, which was a bit demoralising, really. Yes, that's right. But I was... I suppose I was lucky in as much as uh, when Roy Badcock interviewed me. So you had to go back for another interview? No, same time. Same time, outside the front of the factory there, you right. know, one afternoon. He said, well, yes, we are looking for somebody. What do you know about gearboxes? Right. So I said, well, I can overhaul car and truck gearboxes, you know, just for... Uh, they don't come as any problem to me. Right. Um, but uh, what do you what are you uh, referring to regarding racing car boxes? So he said, "Well, we make our own gearbox." Right. Uh, and we're looking for somebody to make those gearboxes to assemble those gearboxes. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well, I'm sure that if somebody shows me." how they go together and what's required to build them, be right. I, I mm -hmm. could do the job. Yeah. And I would be interested in the job, yeah. you know. Yeah. So he said, well, if that's the case, uh, we could offer you that, that position in Lotus Components. Right. So I said, OK, uh, we can have a go at it then. And I was, even then, in 1960, one was still dropping money in terms of really, from wages anyway. as a mechanic to join yeah. Lotus. But that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, that's right. So mm. off we went. Yeah. Uh, well, the gearboxes which we had to build there were for the production uh, Lotus 18s. Right. And for the Mark 19 sports cars right. which were coming along the prototype had been built in August right we uh, we got stuck in I was sent into Lotus Developments and put with two experts in there right and uh, they were two good accommodating chaps who showed me Two all ropes. the tweaks yeah. and yeah I felt quite uh, at home and comfortable with them mm. And, in fact, I spent about a month in there. I've still got my records and yeah. all of that. And after I'd finished my apprenticeship in there, as it were, <laughs> I was shipped back into uh, the Lotus Components part of the factory right. to take over the building of the customer gearboxes. Was it quite a large factory at that point? Was it quite uh, small still? Well, it was certainly... Much larger than I'd been mm. used to working in, from, uh, from uh, yeah. coming from a garage, you yeah. know, with uh, with about eight mechanics and uh, a small sales and store staff. And the Formula One stuff and the Formula Two stuff were on, under the same roof, sort of thing, or uh, in the same building, but, but separate, uh, separated away, very much separated away. Right. Mm. So I thought that that uh, that was at least putting me amongst the right sort of machinery. Yeah, exactly. So we went through building quite a number of these boxes 
and the sports car boxes, which took me right through to the summer of 61. Right. And when did you start? 60. So I had a, I had a, a year of this. Right. And I suppose I must have built, in that time, about 30 gearboxes. And you actually used to um, assemble them? Assemble them from uh, machined castings. Right. Hmm? to fettle in the castings, to make the components right, fit, wow. yeah. to uh, making up all the selector mechanism. And, it, and we, uh, this gearbox was like a sequential change gearbox. Right. It wasn't, uh, you know, a gate hmm? arrangement. It was a, a five-speed gearbox, but a sequential change, rather like a motorcycle, working yeah. on a motorcycle principle. It was, it was very compact, it was very light and quite fragile, mm. so uh, it was very important to... Uh, I mean, how long would it take you to make one up? About a week. As long as that? Uh, yes, about a work. full week's work mm. to get get the parts to... together, yeah. make them all fit together properly, yeah. make yeah. sure it all selected properly, and then hand it over to the lads to put in the car. Mm. And if I wasn't doing gearbox work, then I used to work on the assembly of the cars. We had a Formula Junior production line there. Mm. We had the uh, Formula 1 and Formula 2 cars for mm. Mark 18s, and then the Mark 19 series of cars. Right. Well, when, when that came to an end, uh, the building of those boxes, uh, they wanted me to go into Lotus Components, but that was building like... The, customer Formula Junior cars. Right. And I said, well, you know, that's that's a bit of a backward step for me. I really want to yeah. I really want to move on and I want to end up in the racing department. Right. So uh, there was a bit of a talk about it because I said, really, you know, if I don't move on I might have to consider going somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. And I'd spoken to uh, customers uh, who had come along for cars to see what possibilities there were. Right. It was all very, all quite difficult because they didn't want to poach uh, a Lotus mechanic no. to look after their car in case it damaged their service from Lotus. Quite, yeah. Bits over again. So uh, yeah. it was a bit sort of, you know, closed shop and hemmed in mm. but anyway I was I was lucky again because uh, Nobby Clark who was the uh, the manager of the Lotus component group was good enough and sensible enough to see where I wanted to go along with Roy Badcock mm. and they handed me over to Lotus Developments right because they wanted uh, some extra staff in there so by going to developments I was then under the wing of uh, Mike Costin right mm -hmm. and Mike Costin was a racer mm. you know he was a good driver yeah a good development engineer and a really you know enthusiastic uh, director of a company right although he was a working director as well he yeah. was mm. in his white coat and busy you know mm. And Mike put me with Steve Sandville, who's who specialised on the uh, powertrain, the engine work and uh, gearbox work. Right. And Steve is a very thorough uh, engineer. And there was there was myself and one other person worked directly with Steve Sandville. Right. And was much. What was this on Formula One? Right. No, this was on again on gearboxes. Right. Uh, but this time we were working on Calotti gearboxes, right. mm -hmm. which we used on the Formula One cars, yeah. and also the Indy cars, right. which we were looking into. The engine project for the for the Alain sports car, right, which mm -hmm. was a twin cam engine based on a on a Ford block. So I was. Uh, I was like next door to the racing then because so it's getting closer. Yeah, Lotus mm -hmm. Developments and Team Lotus 
you know, Chapman yeah. was about all the time and uh, yeah. casting, as I said. So uh, we were in amongst the races where I wanted to be. Yeah. And we saw out that season of 62, but coming up on the skyline was uh, the Cortina racing programme. Right. I was asked if I would like to go onto the Cortina team. Well, that was at least going racing, so I said, mm. yes, I would. And uh, the Cortina racing team was set up. Unfortunately, 1963 was a fairly fairly quiet year because of the homologation of cars. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, the FIA said that there had to be a thousand touring cars built to homologate it to yeah. race. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Lotus had built a special extra workshop to produce Lotus Cortinas, but uh, they never got to anywhere near a hundred cars uh, at the start of the season. Yeah. So we were stalled for actual racing of them, but none the more, we, we built our cars uh, so did they, they race though? Slight. We didn't race them until the end of of uh, sixty three. Uh, but who would have driven those? G uh, Jim Clark, Trevor Taylor. Right. Uh, but during the course of the of the summer, we used to go out on regular test days, right. up to Snetterton or Silverstone, mm -hmm. to test these cars and run these cars. Mm -hmm. The chief mechanic, Ray Parsons was also a test driver. Oh, right. And, uh, you know, it was a nice, tight little group. Yeah. Uh, Fords had two really good transporters built for us by Marshalls of Cambridge, and we were really quite a, you know, a well-funded, yeah, little smart unit sort of thing. Mm. operation. And we finally were able to race two cars at Oldham Park in the autumn. Right. Uh, of of 63. We developed them, uh, let me see, 63, yes, when we'd finished racing, we then sort of reverted back to Team Lotus again, and right. we uh, we built a car for the Tasman series. So how did you get on with that first race over here anyway? Uh, what, with touring cars? Uh, oh, we won our, huh. won our class. They were very... And who was driving that? Uh, Jim Clark, Clark yeah. yes. They were, they were very competitive cars. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Jim Clark used to put on a really good yeah, that's right. display of balance mm. and uh, driving skills. Doing that side wheel and all that. Against, you know, seven litre galaxies that's right. and Mustangs. Yeah. And so, what engine would the Cortinas have had? Two litre? It, uh, no, it was a 1500. Was that all? Mm. Wow. Yeah. So, did you do well to keep up with those big yes. and stuff, didn't you? Well, the Cortina was the initial idea was to challenge the, uh, the three point four and three point eight litre Jags, Jags mm -hmm. which it would have it would have given them a very hard time. Yeah. You know, it mm. would have been good good stuff. But yeah. because of the delay in homologation, which was, you know, quite a frustration yes, for, quite, absolutely. for all concerned, yeah. Ford Motor Company and mm. Lotus, where it got delayed. So we ended up racing against the galaxies. And, right. And, uh, Which he probably didn't keep up with, did he? No, we uh, we couldn't quite handle <laughs> their, their seven-litre engines. Yeah, quite. And that. But oh, performance that's... around the corners, of mm, course, absolutely. was Brought it back. better, yes. So, yeah. so, so it, I think it was a very popular form of touring car yeah, racing at that time. Yeah. And I stayed with the touring cars till the end of 66. Right, mm-hmm. Uh, but during that time, there were uh, odd diversions. Who else? So if, so if you finished at 66 with the Cortinas, what other drivers would you have used up to uh, that point? Was it Sir John Whitmore? Did yes. He, he drove a, one, didn't he? Yeah, there was a huge was list. He on, was he a works driver as such? Well, he was. yes, he was on the works list, he as was. it were. Right. Uh, yes, Stewart. Did he? Uh, Jackie Stewart drove Beckwith, it, Beckwith. Yeah. Hegborn. Hmm. X, 
Really? I didn't realise Jackie X drove Jackie one. X drove yeah. one in the Marlborough 12 hours in America. He got a long weekend off from the Belgian Army when he was 19. He? Wow, that's amazing, so, isn't it? And he was a very, very good driver. Yeah. As, you know, one was going to find out in later years mm. uh, when he became a Grand Prix driver. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so many drivers. Jack Sears. Yeah, cool, dear. Uh, he used to run the Galaxy, though, didn't he? Yes. Before that. Jack uh, Peter Arundel. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you can go on and on. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then in America, there was the English Ford line over there, so we had a team. I would say, do you have a separate team in the States? Separate team in the States right. in 64, mm. which went off to Sebring in March mm. and didn't return till, you know, the end of the. the they were taking the, the cars from here with them? The cars were built How here. How many cars were they taken? Uh, yeah, I think we built three. I've, got, I've actually got the records of mm. all that sort of mm. stuff tucked away. But yeah, and we sent off the uh, Ray Parsons as chief mechanic went off over there. Mm. And, and were the guys sent over from here to go with him, or did they get them from no, the states? No, he had his own. He had his own chaps from here, a couple of chaps with him. Went over with him, yeah. and then they had assistants from uh, Ford in right, America. Right. And if it was a twelve-hour race, then we went from England as well right. to back it up. Mm. But it was. You know, it was quite hard profile stuff for him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And good racing. I was going to say, it's a pity there's not a lot of um, film of it. You hardly see ever any film of the Lotus Cortinas anywhere now, do you? Racing, you know. No. So, there is the year of a Cortina, a uh, Ford. Do they make it? Yes. Mm, mm. But you it, don't see anything. You must remember it's 35 years oh, yeah, ago. yeah, that's right. So do people want to see touring car racing 35 years ago well now and again now and again some clips, wasn't it? yes see some clips so that was when was that 66 well that took us up really to the end of 66 right and uh, of course involved in the the, the Are racing you doing gearbox there so oh on the on the on the Cortinas. saloon cars we used to do everything everything basically yes, everything, so everything, everything. i was chief mechanic of right the right touring cars and you'd have only two two cars per in the team sort of thing for yeah, the race. Yeah, but we had a spare car. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Well... You uh, hadn't been doing any F1 stuff or anything in, you know, in, in the meantime? Not, not very much. A bit, perhaps, here and there. Right. Mm. Uh, a bit of indie stuff, helping to build the cars. And yeah. Yes, well, I, we went to Indy for one or two of us and, you know, involved mm. on some of their work. Uh, but... Uh, one was always involved with Chapman at the mm. touring car races and he knew that I wanted to go single seater racing so he put me in charge of the, the Formula 2 team for 1967. And who had been running in that team? Uh, in 67 it was uh, Jim Clark and uh, ah, 67 Graham Hill. Oh right. Yeah. 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 Because uh, Aaron Dole had uh, had his drama with an accident. He had quite a bad accident. That. that was before that, right? I think. Yeah. So it was. It was Jim Clark and Graham Hill. Right. That's it. Okay. And what? And what car would that have been? Well, that was a Lotus Forty Eight. Right. Okay. Which was uh, a scaled down, a scaled down Formula One car, really. Yeah. Uh, designed by Morris Philippe. Right. Mm. We built. Uh, we built three of those cars to do the uh, European F2 series, season. F2 series, which right. I think was about 25 race meetings. Quite, quite a lot. Huge, yeah. huge season yeah. races. And so over here, where would you go for that then? Over we here, Crystal Palace. Uh, we over here, we we raced at virtually everywhere. Snetterton, yeah, Silverstone. Uh, Brands? Brands. I could I could tell you for sure if I just got my book. Yeah. Do you want to shut that yeah, down for a sec? Uh, what did we do? Uh, yeah, we went to a load of little Snetterton, Silverstone, Pau, Barcelona, Madrid, uh, Nürburgring, Rome. Rome? Uh, mm. Mallory Park, mm. Belgium. Was that Spa? Uh, 
Would have been somewhere else. Uh, Limburg. Who would have uh, that one? We said Crystal Palace. Yeah. Uh, the Monza one. Alton Park? Uh, Alton Park, yes. Yeah. Uh, Rouen. Mm. Uh, Albi. Oh, yeah. Hamanlina, which is Finland. Really, Finland? Helsinki. Yeah. Enna. Yeah. Karlskoga. Langenleibahn, which is Vienna. Rouen. Reims. I can say if Reims are still open, funnily enough. Yeah, so, so the season, well, it was... Cool, I mean, that was a long old season. Oh, yeah. 22, 23. Races. A lot of races. From yeah. when? From, From March, March 24th to November the 12th in it's Spain. Busy old season, then. Yeah. Hell I mean, the drivers had to fit in the F1 stuff in between, and plus, what, plus whatever else. Yeah, as well. That's they were my busy. That's my that's my old book. Where and how did you get on? Well, in terms of performance, yeah, we had uh, we had uh, three three wins with uh, Jim Clark. Right. A second, three thirds, a fourth, three mechanical retirements, mm -hmm. and two shunts. Because Jim didn't do all the races, you see. No, right. So would uh, someone have taken his place, or you would have would he run one car instead? Uh, in some places, it was one car. Yeah. Uh, Graham got three seconds, two thirds, a fourth, two fifths, two sixths, two sevenths, mm. a fifteenth, and four mechanical retirements and two practice crashes. So that. Uh, uh, I ended up at the end of the year, and at you were the chief end of 67 as chief mechanic, right. changing over to the Formula One team. Right. And in fact, we did the first Formula One race at Harama. It was a non-championship oh, event right. in... On November the 12th. 67. Yeah, 67. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was with what car? That was with... A, was that a 49? That was with the 49s direct from Mexico. Right, OK. Mm -hmm. We went... And how did you get on? We won. Right. Yeah, we won. Mm -hmm. Stuart had a nearly fatal accident there. Oh, was that when... In a Formula 2 car. Right. When he went off and the car nosed under the armco, lifted the armco out of the ground, oh, yeah. and it just stopped short of the end of his nose. Really? Yes. Oh. I, I can remember, you know, that very unnerving God, yeah. incident for him. Mm. He was very lucky. But that was, so that was your first a, Formula One race. That was my as uh, as chief. Yeah. Chief mechanic, yes, with the old cars. That now, been Graham and Jim, and Jim Clark. That's right. Right. Yeah. But when was the first time you, you, you were in charge of the car? That was Harama, was it? Sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yes, I, uh, right. I was on board with with the mechanics uh, from from the uh, you know from the season, as it were, from right. the '67. So, who was the chief mechanic before that? And the chief mechanic. Uh, let's just I've got to think about all this fairly carefully uh, Dix Camel was the chief was. mechanic mm -hmm. yes. yeah. and Dix Camel was moving off to become chief mechanic of Indy oh he was he on the Indy team instead yes the right. turbine Indy car uh -huh. yeah. of 68 that's right, right. Mm -hmm. so we did this race with the 49s I was with uh, you know all the lads so I knew it, anyway it, it, I presume obviously saying that it would have been a bigger team for Formula 1 rather than a Formula 2 team if you see what I mean no not hardly any really wow yes. so half a dozen people yeah same old it's amazing thing. isn't it yeah same old team Formula 1 cars yes when do you think it's a day 
Yeah, yeah shoot. Got virtually thousands of people yeah. working on it. No, it was the same sort of thing, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we had uh, we had to pick up the cars and spares from London Airport. From Mexico. From Mexico. Right. I can remember that quite plainly. And loading all this lot up. It was in wooden crates and things then. We didn't have any, you know, nice pack horse no, containers quite. or radcons, aluminium radcons. No. It was all in wooden crates. <laughs> and we loaded the, the, the cars into the transporter and crates. And we headed off uh, down to Dover and then down. So you went straight to Spain, literally? Straight to Spain off from the, the airport. Off the plane. Wow. After these cars to bring them home had done... Three races. In, Three races? Yes, they'd done uh, Canada, I think they'd... Uh, no. USA? No, they'd done two, hadn't they? They'd done the American, American Grand Prix at Watkins Glen. And then went straight to Mexico. And Mexico. And then... And you took them straight down to Spain? Then straight down to Spain. So what race was that then? The non-championship? That was the inaugural Formula One race at Arama. Right, OK. Which was running Formula Two cars as well. Mm -hmm. And we knew that when one got to the Spanish border, you were always in for a hold-up. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to have to drive sort of day and night. We would have got down to the Spanish border in the morning, and then they just put you in a compound, and the performance started with trying to get through the customs. Um, well, it just been awkward, or was that the way it worked uh, in those days, uh, sort of thing? That's the way it worked. You could never tell head and a tail of who was in charge of what. Right. And you just used to be messed about by people who didn't understand what yeah. they were looking at or what they were doing uh, <laughs> until the motor club, the organising club in Madrid would get onto the border and say, what's going on, why are all these people being held up? So we spent our day in the autumn sunshine unpacking the crates. In the car park? In the car park. At the border? Cleaning the cars <laughs> in the compound yeah. at the border because we didn't have any time to mess about. No, you've got to do something. And uh, finally they released us, I think, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And we had to drive all night. Oh. Uh, to Madrid get circuit. Mm -hmm. to get to the circuit. Once we were at the circuit, they had carriages at the circuit. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like the most modern circuit in the world then. Was it? Really? It had carriages with sliding doors and everything. Uh, we uh, started to, you know, finish off preparation of the cars and uh, get ready for our practice and do the, the next race day. meeting. The next day. Oh yes, there was never, never any. That much time. Yeah. I, I think, I think we drove through the night, and like, uh, if we got to the hotel, I can't remember for sure uh, whether we'd got any sleep much or not. But yeah. uh, it was into the next day, you know. Just keep going. Just we oh, just yeah. used to keep going. Yeah. yeah. But it was the same for everybody. We were all in the same boat. Yeah, of course. And. Uh, we had a good, uh, good win. Mm -hmm. So, so you started off, say, '68 with the with the uh, forty nine. So, was it an easy easy car to sort of work on and get to know and that sort? Of, it wasn't too complex, sort of thing. No, it was it quite was nice, easy to work on as such. Yes, I think in, it at was the start. It was the best designed car around, and that was a Morris Philip car. Was that uh, right? Very much so, in right. Chapman. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, and. Duckworth. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, it was a mm. good uh, coordinated effort between yeah. Yeah. Ford, Cosworth, and, and Lotus and Team Lotus. Mm. Mm. Yeah, right. and and ZF as well with their transmissions. Right. That win put us, you know, in good shape for, for the, the end. Of, yeah. The end of the season. We yeah. finished on a high note mm. with great expectations for. Uh, Next year. So when did you when did you first get wind of the of sponsorship coming in for Gold Leaf and all yes. that? Because well, that of course, was the last also, race appeared in the green, wouldn't it? Right. That's also, at that time, we just moved to. Uh, it was the end of our first year in Norfolk. Right. 
uh, like the, the Formula 2 cars, the first Formula 2 racing car was the first car that actually finished in the brand new factory right. at Hethel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were all sort of feeling our way around Norfolk and, right. yeah, all and everything. Mm. But all quite exciting yeah. stuff, really. Mm. And uh, through the winter, well, there wasn't very much much winter for us, really, because we got back, you know, the end of, like, the, the third week in... What, November? November. And, uh, and the, the cars first, had to be racing in South Africa the was first of really early, wasn't it? First of January. Well, that's only what, five so weeks. So really, there was yes, plus the Christmas. Christmas, such as it was, yes. Yeah. I think we had Christmas Day off. Yeah. So you had five weeks between the last race and the first. Yes, that's Not right. Not time at all. No. no, and also cars had to be prepared for the Tasman series as well. At the same time. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we were really, really fairly busy over right. that. Mm-hmm. short period and then you had to change the colours of the cars for a start right for the new year yeah well that was a that the was Tasman a, cars that was a difficulty done, for the boys out on the Tasman because they went out as green sort of, sort yes of thing. like we changed. went out to South Africa as green yeah. and yellow mm. and you know again, oh really for the for we raced that was the January last 68. time yes that's in here that's the last yeah Formula 1 race in Green and yellow. Right. Okay. But uh, so the Tasman series was what sort of dates are we talking about over Christmas and New Year, aren't we? No, we're talking about the Tasman series in January and February. Right. So therefore, the, the Tasman would have would have overlapped with an F one race. Yeah, the Tasman the cars same, all sort of. The Tasman cars, their first race was the following weekend uh, to the uh, to the South African Grand was Prix it? because so those cars would have gone back to South, to. Um, no, so they, they were different were, cars. Right. They were 49Ts, weren't they? Yes. That's right. Yes. So Clark went straight off from uh, from Come Johannesburg. Army. Yeah. Like, immediately after the race, yeah. he was on a f- night flight off to... Uh, Australia. Australia yeah. to mm-hmm. start his... Because uh, there was a long old gap, wasn't there, between the first race of the New Year and the second? Yes, that's right. right. Sort of two, uh, two months or... Well, it went to March. Yeah. Yes. Couple of months, wasn't it? Yes. Perhaps even longer, sort of. Than yes. Two and a half months. Yeah. It's a big old gap between the first and second races. So, what sort of? How, how was it announced? That um, how were you told about that? Were you changing the colours of the cars and all that? How did you find out? That it was uh, going to be gold leaf instead. Well, we've was uh, a sort of big announcement with, at the factory or something like that. Or I don't actually remember that. All I remember is we we had to provide some cars. Just for a, basically a fairly simple, straightforward press release in in London. I mean, right. the uh, the car Formula One car, which was presented, only had a tubular frame in oh. place of an engine because mm-hmm. we didn't have an engine. They were all being rebuilt. Or, right. Mm-hmm. Or we had to paint it. Redo it. It. it was just mm-hmm. it, just a tubular frame yeah. there, uh, and the new new logos and. It was stuck on. Yes, mm. and colour schemes. Mm. And quite frankly, it wasn't a very popular move with anybody. The mechanics didn't like it because they liked racing in green and yellow. Yeah. It was our, it was the company colours and green was the national was colours because yeah, right. we used to race for the country then yeah. and for, for the private team. Mm. And then you had this Extra, uh, sort of corporate stuff coming. Corporate yeah. requirement. Mm. Although at that stage of the game, we were telling them how to go racing. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, which isn't the case these days. No, that's right. We did have on the cars in South Africa. I notice it looks like we've got shell and. Firestone on yeah, the side. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Perhaps it might be just that like one race, perhaps. So it was perhaps just sort of... Getting in. Yeah, but at but least... But those are the things you used anyway. Yeah, that the was trade. Yeah, that was exactly. trade. Rather than something completely separate. Then you've got... You've S- got STP on it, on there. Yeah, STP, Firestone, Ford. Mm. Fun enough, There's the sailor there. That's right. This Fun. is... Right. It's... Uh, that's a Tasman car, isn't it? That January 68 and the... Uh, 
in a Christchurch garage mm. where it had been re-sprayed in the colours of a cigarette brand. But there's a, all sorts of aggro on the Tasman about, you know, even running. In, yeah, yeah. So things change then. You know, it might, For a it, start, was there a lot more money around? Didn't seem to be. No, not coming, not filtering through to you personally, I bet. <laughs> no, there was more money around, obviously. For the team? Yes, yeah. because one had to struggle, you know, from oil companies and tyre yeah. companies to get the money to to race and start mm. money and everything. Yeah, was we, still important even at that point. Yeah, mm. we relied on all of that. Mm. Um, it, was quite, it, was, it was quite a hard year. Well, yeah, uh, that's right. We we were looking forward to you know a good year with and were you, uh, with Jim. But the in, the indie team was still separate at that point. Obviously, was it? Uh, we, yes, we were so all still under the indie. same still under the same roof. Yeah. Uh, there used to be you know a little interdepartmental competition, as it yeah, were, to right, try and get things done. People would be saying, "Oh, well, the bloody indie teams." You know, got a machine shop doing this, yeah, or, and we can't get it, and we can't get our bits, and we're going off somewhere. Yeah. So uh, there was always, you know, one was playing off perhaps one side against the other, and uh, and and just trying to keep your own end up. Yeah, you know. Right, yeah. And whoever was most powerful used to just sort to of it, <laughs> made the most noise. Used to get the job done. Yeah. But then. Chapman was pretty pretty much on the button on everything. Yeah. And he relied so much on the enthusiasm of his men uh, to get through the work. Yeah. We used to work just horrendous hours, mm. you know. So you weren't, you weren't planning to... Or you didn't go to India in 68 at all? No, no. Not, not, not even thinking about no, going to right, India. And incidentally, the Indy cars were probably the best... You know, our, our car construction had improved and You're improved. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the Indy cars, because they had a gas turbine engine and mm -hmm. aircraft technology, yeah. uh, were, you know, the, the best engineered cars we'd, we'd come up with today. Right. right, They were really superb. Yeah. A, a massive effort went into make, you know, Winning cars. Yeah.